Gilda, let me thank you very much for hosting the event. And thank everybody for coming. My voice is a little rough, so what I'd like to do, and I'm going to be speaking hopefully to a few thousand people in a little bit of a while. Uh, what I would like to do for my edification, I don't want to give you a speech. I, I give enough speeches. What I would like to do is have a frank discussion, if I could, uh, and ask you a very simple question. Uh, the reason I am in Louisiana uh, today and why I was in Texas last week and why, God help me, in the middle of August, I'm going to be in Alabama, Mississippi, <laughs> South Carolina. That is not the smartest thing. But. Why am I doing it? Why am I going to states that are all Republican? Because that's where the poor people are. All right. That's a good thought. That's where we, we need, need to help. Because everybody counts. All right. All right. All right. All right. Yes, ma'am. The weather here this time of year. That's right. You're absolutely right. Get out of Vermont where it's nice and cool and it comes from Louisiana. You're right. That's why I'm here. All right. We have to be as easy as the governor. <laughs> All right. The reason I ask the question is one of the things that we hope to accomplish in this campaign, of many, is to raise fundamental questions that are not being asked. Now, the reason I am going to these conservative states is I think the Democrats have made a tragic mistake in essentially abdicating their That's number one. I don't know how you are a national political party if you're not competing in 50 states. That, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. So what politics has become is the Democrats have abdicated literally, you know, somewhere around half the states of this country. They control a number of states and they fight for eight or nine battleground states. That's politics in America. Mm -hmm. So that seems to me to be fairly stupid. But the second part is that many of the states that the Democrats have abdicated are some of the poorest states in America. Right. All right, I could understand that there's a really an affluent state someplace and all the rich people who are going to vote Republican, fine. That is not, I think, the case in Louisiana. Or am I missing something here? No. All right, you've got a state with massive amounts of poverty, with huge numbers of people who have no health insurance, right? Yes. Where people are making abysmally low wages, right? Yes. Yes. So how do you abdicate your presence in a state like this and give it over to the Republicans? Right. Thank you. I don't know. Yeah. All right, now the second question, and I know this gets into race issues and everything else, but let's have a frank discussion. The other thing that I don't understand is how in states where there is so much poverty, where wages are so low, why Republicans control those things. Mm -hmm. All right, I want some answers. So help me out. Southern strategy. All right, tell me about the Southern strategy. That's exactly Atwater, right? All right, stand up and tell people about the Southern strategy. Oh, well, <laughs> well, but so, yeah, come here, come next to me. That's my favorite. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really shy. Um, <laughs> from what I understand, Lee Atwater's campaign philosophy was that if you can convince the lowest uh, white population that they're better off mm -hmm. than anyone else, then they will vote for you. Mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. And I, I read an interesting Atwater story, too. Apparently, right before he died, he found Jesus. Mm -hmm. But after he died, they found a Bible in his room that was totally unopened. <laughs> <laughs> his conversion was quick. <laughs> All right, but what about that? What about, and how do you counteract that? Divide and conquer, and people feeling that they All right, don't... Divide, yes. All right, speak up. What's your name? Uh, Heidi Sinclair. So okay, Heidi. Divide and conquer, and also um, people feeling like they don't have a voice or a say in... All right, let me just let me just pose that. Let me pick up on that point. Let me just. I need your help on this one. I'm a politician, and I've run for office many, many times. Uh, if I were the governor of Louisiana, and if the federal government provided free expansion yes. of Medicaid. Yes. So I don't know how many people. Does anyone know the number here? In how many? 577,000. How much? 250? Yes. 577,000 according to the Department of Health and Hospitals. All right, 577. Okay. Yes. Got an auction here. 250,000 are working people. Okay. So if I were a governor of the state, 
and I had the opportunity to provide free health insurance. It didn't cost me a nickel because it's federal money for three years and then a little bit less later on. For 500,000 people. I don't, whenever my view might be of the federal government of Medicaid, I would be pretty nervous about rejecting that right. offer because I would think the 500,000 people would say, excuse me, my kids need health care mm -hmm. and think. you just rejected it, you're getting mm -hmm. booted out of here. Yeah. Yeah. How could it happen that somebody gets away with this? Who wants to help me out on this? Yes, sir. It's 20 years of no democratic messaging in Louisiana. Yeah. 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 to that concentration in the, in the battleground states. And it's also racism. Racism. It's all predicated on fear. Obama, oh, no. And when I go out into the poor areas and they tell me about my hospitals being closed, the clinics being closed, they say it's because of that darn Obama. Right. Oh, it's not. <laughs> all right. So what I'm hearing, some interesting points. Okay. Is there not much? Uh, is the average person not hearing a progressive message oh, in Louisiana? Yeah. 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 Lack of knowledge, yes. Yeah. Lack, lack of knowledge. Of knowledge. <laughs> lack of knowledge. Uh, I, I would say in my age group, 20s to 30s, yeah. um, most people's political party affiliation is based on how they grew up. Cradle yeah. If their parents are Republic, Republican, Republican, they're Republican. And they couldn't even tell you why they vote that way. They just know, I don't know, my mama votes red, I vote red. <laughs> and I think it's lack of knowledge across the board. And, and that's all predicated on fear. You're, you're afraid to change. You're afraid to take and do this, take a challenge. And so you take and stay with what is known instead of taking the, the biggest part uh, difference between the GOP and the Democrats is the GOP feeds on fear and allows it to control everything. The uh, Democratic Party has says, okay, there's fear out there, but there's nothing to fear from fear except it fear itself. We accept that we move on, but that doesn't get heard in most of these communities because fear is all you know. Fear is a lie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Across the radio spectrum in South Louisiana, all you hear is conservative yes. radio talk show. No liberal. Yes. No liberal. Well, Just conservative radio, radio talk. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And our, our message is not getting to the grassroots. Okay. There's also the idea. Um, the, uh, there's also the idea that um, uh, White people who are lower middle class, poor, working people do not see themselves in that light. Mm -hmm. They no. see themselves yeah. as temporarily disenfranchised mm -hmm. millionaires. Right. And, <laughs> and, and, and it's not an idea that's original to me. But everybody, yeah. Yeah. everybody yeah. thinks they're just that one lottery ticket or one, yeah. one lucky strike away from striking it rich. And so the empathy isn't with the people who are working hard and barely making it. The empathy is with their people, the people with all the money. Louisiana, the Republicans here are also very pro-life until the child is born. After yeah. the child is born, they don't yes. give a damn. Not they're even, not even, yeah, but they're not even for prenatal care. No. They're not even for pre-k. Pre, no. uh, it's a pre -k yeah. it's yeah. not yeah. that bad. They don't, want, they don't want the government in their government. But it's not that bad because when you look at even in the, red, the reddest red states, you still have 35, 40%, 45% uh -huh. who are Democrat. So, you know, when they say it's a landslide in a red state, that's only like 10%. And so the, the, the rest of us feel like we're just being ignored and forgotten. And it's actually a pretty large minority there. Do yes. the national Democrats pay much attention? No. 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 That's why I'm shocked you're here. <laughs> Jersey. This is New Jersey. <laughs> 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 Louisiana. All right. So, Bernie, let me give you an example. Co-workers of mine don't have a lot of money. Lower middle class working. They think they got a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 they, they don't. They don't think they have a lot of money, actually. So, I was talking to them about health care and this, that, and the other thing, and, you know, support and substance and that sort of stuff. But, their complaint was, the trouble with health care is, we're giving too much to the blacks, and they're taking it away from me. Yeah. It's and not all of us, it's us and them. Exactly. And that's the exactly. attitude we see exactly. all the time. Exactly. It's not we're all in this together. It's those people, and they always use the those people, right? Those people are taking it away from me. Yeah. Nailed it. Yeah.
Right. Yeah, more discussion. Who hasn't participated yet? That's a very good point. Yes, ma'am. Bernie, I'm the food stamp lady. Okay. I work for SNAP. And I will tell you that we required with every person who applies, even if they just call to say hello, to ask them, are you a registered voter? Can I assist you in registering to vote? And the majority of them say, no, thank you. And I think I, to address that problem, and but also I can tell you, the people you think are getting food stamps are not the people. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, right. yeah. There's a lot of working people out there getting food stamps. I have to say probably 75% of the people I talk to have some type of job. So, but they have no regard for voting. They you have totally lost them. Yeah. But they also are afraid to go vote. In my town, they're coming. Come here, come here, come here, come here. Come here. <laughs> they're afraid to vote. Can you all hear her? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Be as loud as you can. <laughs> they're afraid to vote. In my town, they have to go to the courthouse and go through security. I, I was privileged to take. Mm -hmm. Someone to his first time to vote, and his only time to vote because he was uh, he died later. But they made him go through security three times. <laughs> and, um, and what, what do you mean go through security? And you, to go vote, well, they Mallard have to go vote the, in the state in courthouse, the courthouse. Yeah. go through security. Oh, so right. they're frightened to vote, but they have changed it so that their voting place is in this giant courthouse and they have to walk up and go through security. Mm -hmm. Just one of many deterrents to yeah. voting. Mm -hmm. And if you have a district that is geared Democrat, uh -huh. that's where the arrest records are the highest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because they want to arrest them and get them to where they can vote. You think that's intentional? Intentional. Yeah. Absolutely. I work in the prison yeah. system. It's intentional. Yeah. yeah. You know, it, it's... it's the, okay, tell you what we're thinking of doing. We have a, a lot of pieces of legislation and ideas we're going to introduce during the campaign. Uh, but as many of you know, uh, apropos voting rights, we are way, way, way behind other countries in that regard. Yes. 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 So we are going to introduce legislation. It's, we haven't finished it completely, but essentially say that if you're 18 years of age in the United States of America, you are registered to vote. Perfect. And, um, and other countries do that to varying yes. degrees. Uh, but it's interesting to hear that uh, so many years after the Civil Rights Act, uh, that there is still intimidation and fear. All of them. Do people, let's stay on that point. People, All minorities. It's an people, open secret. Do people actually, you know, we, those of us who vote, and we all vote, it's not a big deal. But what I'm hearing you say for new voters, there is a fear element to register and so forth. All ages. All, all ages. ages. This mm -hmm. man was an old man. He had never voted. Came from a family of 13. And he was an amazing individual. And he got to vote for the first time for Obama. And Do people agree? Your name is? Sally Dunn. People agree with Sally on that. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Give me some other examples of fear in voting. I, some of them are goofy, but my family, I, I'm the only person in my whole family who's ever voted. <laughs> and my parents have this idea that that's why they get picked for jury duty if you vote. <laughs> like, a lot of people have, yeah, a lot of people have other, the other things that if my name is in this system or I don't like that, I don't want it in there. Fear, yeah. fear of government. Wow. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. There's another one back here. Yes. yes. Just the idea that it won't matter. Yeah. yeah. That's a big one here. Yeah. They all take care of it anyway. What difference does it make if I go? They're jaded. Yes. Both parties or are if you're a Democrat, yeah. you hear a lot of like, well, what is my vote going to matter anyway? Right. We vote red all the time. Yeah. There's no point I, in voting. Yes, sir. I had a student. Okay. We haven't I had, yes, I had a student. I had a student I was teaching in Florida at the time, and it was during the 2008 election. And so then uh, I would have the TV on CNN. Uh, was teaching English literature. Can everybody can, can you? I was mm -hmm. teaching English literature. And so then the I, I asked the students, I said, well, aren't you excited that uh, we might get a black president? Because who's at an alternative school? Mm -hmm. And I literally had some students, one student in particular, very bright young man, but he was like, it's not going to make a difference. Mm -hmm. Him being president is not going to make a difference in my community. And that was his sincere feeling. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it was hard to wrestle with that. Yeah. But that's not fear, but it's the same sort of thing that keeps people away. It's, well, it doesn't yeah. matter. It doesn't, that, I I'm, think that's, I'm sure there are people who are afraid. I'm not disagreeing. Yeah. But a big factor is people don't think it matters. 
Yeah. Well, when you look at tax breaks alone, like the, the lower income people are fed this lie that tax breaks help us, like the mortgage tax break. Okay, yeah, that's amazing that I can claim a tax break, but I have to make it more than my standard deduction. So my little mortgage does not even make it more than what my standard deduction is. So someone who has a $3 million house, of course they can get this nice tax break. But we're fed that this mortgage tax break was for middle class. Mm -hmm. Do people and it really here uh, have any clue what goes on in Washington, D.C.? No. 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 Really. no. For example, no, no. I'll you know, okay. probably talk about it tonight. I'm, on, I'm the ranking member, the leader of the opposition on the budget committee. I represent yeah. the Democrats. Oh, wow. I'd rather be chairman of it, but I <laughs> <laughs> uh, Here was, here was what the Republican budget. Now, the budget is the foundation to which the appropriations committees go forward. This is what the, this is the truth, no exaggeration here. This is what the Republican budget, which passed uh, House and Senate did. It ended the Affordable Care Act mm -hmm. and made 400 plus billion dollar cuts in Medicaid over a 10 year mm -hmm. period. The result, 27 million people were thrown off of health insurance. It's Ryan. Does anybody know that here? Right. Yeah. Some people, yeah. yeah. Then what they did is they cut Pell Grants by $90 billion. Mm -hmm. Talk about food stamps. They mm -hmm. made massive cuts in nutrition programs, food stamps, the WIC program, and other programs. And then what they did is gave $250 billion in tax breaks to the top two-tenths of 1%. Mm -hmm. What percentage of working-class Republicans do you think know that? No. 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 Yeah. So one of the things that happens is the Republicans in Washington at least can do anything they want with the full understanding that cutting Social Security or Medicare or Medicaid, mm -hmm. no one's going to know it. Is that true? Yes. 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 Sir. Yeah. But Bernie, I think the overarching thing is the fact that it's a lack of education. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Because if you, if you have the ability to think, you can understand better, and then therefore you do better. And the majority of this state, we don't have access to quality education. Now, I'm a candidate this year for state representative of District 83, and that's the majority, 50% majority of um, And one of the people... Come on up here. Come on. Get out. Get out. And that's why Paiush has done nothing but cut education. So Keep them in. Keep them in. It's hard to uh, <laughs> control <laughs> public education. Y'all are a beautiful couple. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so one of the issues that I was talking to one of my, uh, hopefully, constituents was that she was talking to me. She's a white girl. She's about 30 years old. She only, she barely had a high picture, but she had three kids, all of whom were in his start. Uh, they all were on Medicaid. And I asked her, um, you know, a couple years ago, how are you going to vote in a 2012 presidential election? I'm not voting for Obama because he's going to cut my child's head start from me in Medicaid. Oh, and I was taken aback. I'm like, Amber, are you serious? You know, the Democratic Party is a very part trying to give you those, <laughs> those, uh, right, those incentives, you know, and not take them away like the Republican Party, but unfortunately, like you would say before, the publics have done a very good job at messaging. We have not. You know, they've been a, done a good job at doing going on offense. We've been playing defense. Their that's propaganda the machine makes Hitler look like a schoolboy. <laughs> 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 yeah. like down, down here, because people are in poverty. We have one of the highest rates of poverty in the country. People are worried about how they're going to feed their children, how they're going to keep their lights on. It's not their job to really understand the inner workings of what's going on in Washington. That's their leader's job. And we don't have leaders coming down here and giving these facts to them. Telling them about Obamacare, telling them about health care, telling them they're afraid to take these votes that they know are in the best interest of their district because they're afraid of what's going to happen as a result. It's no. also hard to learn to work for you hours a week. No, 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 that's a good right. yeah, come on, good. Oh, no, I'm not. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> to, also, to also expand upon that, it, it has not just been Republicans' fault. It's also been Democrats' fault. Yes, because, yes. because in my district, 57% majority African American. My district voted to re elect Mary Landrum, 80% of the vote. My district voted 70% to re elect Barack Obama. My district also, one out of every three African Americans between the ages of 19 and 64, are without health care. One out of three. One out of three. Okay. One out of four is everybody. Okay. The incumbent in that seat right now did not vote to expand Medicaid. He also voted for Democrat. Yes. He also voted for a bill in 2010 that would have um, prohibited the federal government from mandating 
that the people of the state of, uh, in this state be required to get health care through the exchange. That's blatantly unconstitutional. He voted for that. Then when I asked him about it, he said, well, Kyle, are you aware that some people just don't want it? You made a good point. Why don't I just say, you know, when you're working 40, even 60 hours a week and then you have kids at home and whatnot, mm -hmm. you, you just don't have time. So the most that you see are just the headlines that run across the news that are real quick. And what they tell it's you mostly sure. just, Yeah, and it's mostly <laughs> just, oh, shooting here or whatever. Right. You don't exactly. have time to learn exactly. what's going also, on. And, yes, ma'am. Some of the people in the rural areas of this state don't have access to the Internet. Mm -hmm. And Bobby Jindal refused money for, yeah. for them to get... Uh, 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 internet access mm -hmm. from the federal government. He refused that money. So some of these people have no access to information. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's not just a lot of rural, it's urban too. Is that what they do get is a lot of right wing rage. Mm -hmm. yep. 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 They get that all day. Yes, ma'am. She wants to Yes. Yes, ma'am. Oh, well, can I ask you a question on a completely different topic? Yes. Um, how is it that you have an A plus rating from the NRA? Uh, that's that, a good uh, example of a lie. <laughs> where, where did you see that? On the internet or something? I'm sorry? No, you don't. Where did you see that? Um, probably on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> I have a D to F rating for me. Yeah. But here's an example. But, I mean, that's just the fact. It's D to F. But here is, here is the facts. And I was on Meet the Press this morning, and that's what yeah, I was, yeah. that's what I was talking about. In my state, we are a very rural state, and thank God the crime rate is reasonably low. But most of our people have guns, and the guns are used for hunting, they're used for target practice. That's how they're used. Okay. And we have no and, and the people that know that are the people that are yeah. frightened of them because they live in a house. But if we're, like we're going to have a frank conversation, you can go on Facebook on Mattery's Garage Sale and people are selling yeah. guns Somebody for selling anybody to go there. It's, 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 it's such here. easily yeah. accessible if for anyone to get. If it's not legal yeah. here, they will you know. Yeah. Okay. Uh, other thoughts from people who haven't made the first comment? Yeah. yeah. Um, I think it's important to, to stay on core messages. One of the, the messaging problems in this, in this environment is is really significant because when you look at the Democratic Party history, the Democratic Party has delivered important kitchen table economic issues to people that aren't being talked about. Uh, Social Security was delivered by the Democrats over the, the protestations of the Republicans. The GI Bill was delivered by the Democrats over the protestations of big business. Medicare, Medicaid was delivered by the Democrats. The, the messaging out of Washington is getting distracted on things like these cultural issues, one of which is guns, yeah. and, and, and not focusing on the core economic issues. That's one of the reasons, including equality of opportunity and educational opportunities, that makes your campaign so important yes. and why I appreciate it so much. Because you're bringing attention to these core yeah. economic well, that's exactly, opportunity thank you. issues. And that's exactly what we're trying to do. I'll give you an example. How would the people of Louisiana vote if there was an issue on the ballot to raise the minimum wage over a period of a few years to 15 bucks an hour? Would they will support that? No. I don't no. Think no. No. Okay. Yeah, they How would the people vote to make public colleges and universities tuition free? They would vote against it. This room would vote for it. Everyone else would vote for it. You've got people, yeah. you've got, yeah. I mean, this you're talking to people, the people the state would take a vote like, for it yes, if they would vote, but the ones you that know, actually show I mean, vote will vote against somebody, it. Yeah. If somebody who's working a minimum wage job yeah. is afraid that they will no longer have that job, what would they rather have? Would they rather have seven twenty-five an hour? Would they rather have nothing? And that's the messaging that's going to go The message that's sent here in Louisiana is also, even if they raise minimum wage, well, everything else is going to skyrocket anyway, so it's going to be like, I'm back working at six dollars an hour because all the prices. But that is not the experience, yeah. and that's not the truth. Sure, but that's what they That's what we hear. Yeah. Okay, good, done. And un true? unemployment. Bobby Jindal goes around the country boasting about his low unemployment in Louisiana. My wife, after forty something years in IT, found herself unemployed, and 
she tried to file for unemployment and struggled. It's all online. It's intentionally very difficult to apply yes. for. Mm -hmm. There's no unemployment office for illiterate people mm -hmm. to go in and file. So yes, unemployment is low because so people aren't filing basis. for it. They can't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He blocks them from filing for it. And there are no offices in small towns. for community health centers. I'm a member of the community mm -hmm. health center in the Franklin area, and thank you so much. Are they active here in, in yeah. Louisiana? Yeah, through yes. the Louisiana Primary Care Association Good. is. Yes. But well, one of the things that we did, you know, I won't go into a whole song and dance about the disastrous nature of American health care, but one of the things that I worked very hard on in the Affordable Care Act is to greatly expand community health centers. And in my state, actually about 25% of the people don't get their primary health care, and we get dental care, and you get mental health counseling, and you get low-cost prescription drugs. So I'm glad to hear that they have been. People in this room will say, yeah, I know all about that. But if I do a little straw poll on Facebook and say, do people know this is happening? People who I think are pretty smart, and uh, make pretty good decisions in life. I'll say, never had. I didn't hear about that. I didn't know that was happening, and that's a horrible idea. But it's already too late by the time. We're One of the issues point. that is a huge issue that is almost by definition not talked about, and that is the role of media in this country. Yes. 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 Um, and the role that corporate media plays very significantly is deflecting attention away from the most important issues. Mm -hmm. So I think somebody yes. you were talking about, there was an accident or something else will get a lot of attention, that will get the crawl space. And yet, let me give you some examples of issues of unbelievable consequence that almost get no discussion at all. About a year and a half ago, uh, a couple of us in the Senate wrote to the heads of ABC, CBS, NBC, and I think CNN, to say, you know, the scientists, the scientists, we didn't waste too much time. <laughs> the scientists tell us that climate change is already causing devastating problems. And there's a study out there that you guys don't talk about climate change at all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the guy from CVS actually came in, president of CVS. But here's an example of what the scientist tells us is a world environmental crisis almost not talked about at all. Or when it was talked about, well, there's a debate. He thinks it's real. He thinks it's not real. What do you think? There is no debate. All right, issue number one. Here's another issue, huge issue. You all know who the Koch brothers are? Oh, yeah. Uh, tell me, right, I need help on this one. If you have read an article or seen something on TV which tells you what the Koch brothers actually stand for, what do the Koch brothers want? What's their agenda? Anyone know? All right. The answer is the Koch brothers will spend over $900 million in this election. That is more money than either the Democratic Party or the Republican Party will spend. We don't know exactly what their agenda is, but we have a pretty good idea. In 1980, David Koch ran for vice president of the United States on the Libertarian Party ticket. This is what his agenda was. Eliminate and Social Security and Medicare and Medicaid and the U.S. Postal Service and the Environmental Protection Agency and nutrition programs and public education in America. Now, that was 35 years ago. Have they changed their views? Maybe, but I don't know that they have. So the point is, you have the second wealthiest family in America spending more money than the Democrats and Republicans, basically on an agenda that will end every program passed in the last 75 years to help working people. Yep. Have you seen that article in the papers yet? No, 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 no. Okay. but it's on um, Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it will get out in the alternative media, uh, but it is not discussed uh, terribly much. And that's what Citizens United uh, has done. Mm -hmm. So what I am trying to do in this campaign, primarily, is to focus on those issues that mean the most to working families. And what are those issues? Education. First of all, we have to realize that while the economy today, and I know Bobby Jindal will take credit for every Republican mm -hmm. will take credit, the economy today is much better than it was when Bush left office. The yeah. fact is that the average American today is working longer hours for lower wages than was the case 30 or 40 years ago. All right? Paid maternity leave, please. All right. That's one thing. So how does it happen that in the richest country in the history of the world, 
the average person is working longer hours for low wages. We don't have to answer it, but that is the question we should be debating as a nation. If I give you a tool and new technology and you're producing more, why are you earning less? Mm -hmm. Is that a good question? Yes. Okay. Why is it in the United States we have the highest rate of child in poverty of any major country on earth? 20% of our kids are living in poverty. Why do we have more income and wealth inequality? You want to hear inequality? The top one-tenth of one percent, one-tenth of one percent, mm. owns as much wealth as the bottom 90 percent. Fifty-six percent of all new income is going to the top one percent today. Is that an issue you think we might want to be discussing? Yes. Yes. What about